Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the chapter 3 of our business math class. We're going to discuss percentage, ratio, and proportion. So our topics will be first, principles of percentage, second, applications of percentage, third, ratio, and lastly, proportion. Our learning competencies will be compare and differentiate ratio and rate, Second, right proportions, illustrating real-life situations. Third, identify different kinds of proportions. And lastly, solve problems involving direct, inverse, and partitive proportions. So, are you ready? On our previous lesson, we have discussed how to manipulate percent. Today, let's examine some practical applications of percentage in a business. So percent problems involve the application of equations called the percentage formula. So percentage is the result of obtaining by multiplying a quantity by a percent. So percent comes from a Latin term percentum or the Latin word percentu means 100. So for example, a century is 100 years. So, we also have here the base. Base is the number that represents 100% or the total value of something or the whole thing. It is usually preceded by the word of. So, remember, if the given statement because it is being multiplied by the rate. We also have rate. Rate defines what part of the base the percentage is. It can be easily identify, identified because it is usually in terms of percent or fraction. To recall the percentage formula, we use the magic triangle. So magic triangle is the simplest way to know the percentage or your percentage formula. So we have here the portion, wherein portion or your percentage, the rate, and the base. So the triangle is divided, divided into three sections, representing the portion, rate, and base. So by circling or covering the letter in the triangle that corresponds to the unknown of the problem. The triangle will magically reveal the correct formula to use. So, for example, if we're going to find the percentage, okay, so it will give us a formula of rate times base. If we're going to find the rate, it will give us a formula of percentage over your base. And lastly, if we're going to find the base, the formula would be percentage over your rate. So there are steps in solving percentage problem. So first, determine the two given values and the unknown variable. Second, choose the appropriate formula to solve for that unknown. Lastly, solve the equation by substituting the values of the given variables. To understand this better, we're going to solve some examples. Example number one, what is 30% of 250? So since the problem says percent of 250, therefore we can conclude that your base is the 250 and your rate is 30%. Now we're going to find the percentage. And what is our formula for percentage? That is, percentage is equal to rate times your base. So this will be your given. Now, let's proceed with the solution. Okay, so P, what is your rate? That is 30% times 250. So we're going to convert 30% to decimal. That is 0 0.30 times 250. This will give you an answer of 75. So your conclusion seventy-five is 30% of 
250. Okay? So, let's proceed with example number 2. Find the 120% of 45. Okay, again, let's have our given. So, our base would be 45. Our rate would be 120%. And we're going to find again the percentage. Again, your formula would be P is equal to rate times your base. So, solution. P, 120% times 45. Let's convert 120 to decimal. That's 1.20 times 45. It will give you an answer of 54. So your conclusion, 54 is 120% of 45. In example number 3, the base is always the number that comes after the, the phrase um, percent of or part of and the percentage is the result of finding a part of the base so in number three it says 72 is what percent of 90 since the problem says percent of 90 the base or base is 90 okay so let's put it here so you're given base is 90 and your percentage is 72 so take note that we multiply the formula of the rate by 100 okay since the problem as 4% and what is the formula so here we're looking for the rate okay so rate our formula for rate is here, okay? So, rate is equal to percentage over your base. So, solution. What is your percentage? That is 72 over 90. This will give us an answer of 0 0.8. And then, since we're looking for the percentage, we're going to multiply it by 100. And it will give us an answer of 80%. So, your conclusion will be 72 is 80% of 90. Okay, so example number four. What is percent of thirty? Uh, what is percent of thirty-five? Is two hundred ten? So here, same as number three, it says that the problem. Uh, since the problem says percent of thirty-five, so your base would be so given. Your base would be 35. And the percentage is 210. Again, we're looking for the rate. And the formula for rate is rate equals to percentage over your base. So, solution. What is your percentage? That's 210 over 35. So, 210 divided by 35 is equal to 6. Multiply this by 100. That will give us an answer of 600%. So, your conclusion would be 210 is 600% of 35.
Example number five. So, 20% of what number is 45? So, since the problem says percent of what number, therefore, we can conclude that the base is unknown. The rate is 20% or 0 0.20. And the percentage is 45. So remember, the rate is always the number that comes before the word of or as large as. And the percentage is the result of finding a part of the base. So number 5 are givens. Okay. Our givens is the rate that is 20%. Or 0 0.20. So, this sign um, is what uh, we call approximately equal to. Okay? And percentage is 45. So, our formula. So, we're looking for the base. And our formula for the base. So, here. So, base is equal to percent. Uber your rate. Okay, so solution. B, what is your percentage? That's 45 over 0 0.20. That will give us an answer of 225. So your conclusion would be... 45 is 20% of 225. So, okay, so example number 6. 80 is equal to 10% of what number? So it says percent of what number? And then we can conclude that the base is unknown. Therefore, our rate is 10% or 0 0.10. Our percentage is uh, 80%. And we're also looking for the base. Again, what's our formula? That is B is equal to percentage over your rate. Solution. So, percentage, that's 80, over 0 0.10. The answer would be 800. So, your conclusion, 80 is equal to 10% of 800, which, which will make sense, right? Let's discuss percent increase and percent decrease. So, percent increase is used to illustrate how much quantity of an amount has increased over its original value. So, example, um, example of that is employee receives a 10% salary increase and sales volume increase by 5% compared to the last year's sales volume. These are some of the examples of percent increase, while the percent decrease is the um, opposite of increase. So it is used to illustrate how much quantity or an amount decreased from its original value. So example statement will be employees' average production output has decreased 80% over last month and sales volume uh, sales volume decreased by 7% by 7%. So, one of the most common application of percentage involves expressing an increase or decrease. So, in order to find the amount of decrease or increase in a particular quantity or measurement as percent, we multiply the rate by the original amount and add the product to the base. If it is an increase, and then we subtract the product from the base if it is a decrease, the formula that can summarize this 
is here. So, percentage of decrease that is base plus your base times rate. While your percentage of decrease that is base minus base times your rate. So, this formula is very important to analyze or to solve those problems. So, let's have an example to understand this better. 285 increased by 36%. So, remember, how do we know the rate? It is usually in terms of a fraction or a percent. So, in number one, your given will be your rate is equal to 36% or 0.36%. Your base is 285. So, um, by um, given the word increase, we're going to find the percentage of increase. Percentage of increase. So our formula for this, if we, if you remember, that is. P, or percentage of increase, is equal to base plus base times your rate. Okay. So, solution. This one, it's percentage of increase, ha? Okay. So, your base is 285 plus 285 times 0 0.36. Remember the PEMDAS. Okay, 285 plus 102.6. So adding both, it will give us an answer of 387.6. So your conclusion So um The percent of increase, uh, percentage of increase is 308.6. Number two, how much is 3 over 7 less than? 457.80 pesos. So, our given, we have a fraction here. That will be your rate, 3 over 7. And if you're going to compute this, that will give you an answer of 0 0.4285714242. Okay, so you can just simply calculate this um, using the calculator. Okay? And then your base would be 457. Point eighty, And now, um, we're going to find the percentage of decrease. Why decrease? Because of the word less than. So, um, you will also need to consider some keywords. Like, for example, it, it increased up. So, you're going to use the percentage of increase eventually. And then if you, um, if words or statements gives you um, less than, um, lower than, um, goes down. So, that is, um, that will be your hint that you're going to use the percentage of decrease. Okay? So, your formula for this would be percentage of decrease decrease is equal to base minus your base times your rate. Okay? So, what's your base? It's 457.80 minus your base, okay, 0.80 times your, um, your fraction or your rate. Okay? So, 457.80 minus 196.20, it will give you an answer of 
261.60. So, this will be the percentage of your decrease. Okay, so here, um, in solving problems involving uh, money, so don't forget in your conclusion design, okay, or the currency. So, percentage of decrease is um, 261.60 pesos. So, in example number 3 and 4, it says that we need to find, we need to find part uh, part less than and percent more than. And then, to determine the rate on increase and decrease, we need to get the difference between the two values and divide by the base. Then, change the fraction to percent if it is necessary. So, this will be the formula that we're going to use. That is, rate is equal to the larger amount minus your smaller amount over your base. So, example number three, we have <clears throat> the larger amount. So, given um, larger amount is 272. And then, the smaller amount is 85 and then your base is 272 so question is find what part less than 272 is 85 so our solution using our formula that we discussed earlier so rate is equal to 272 minus 85 over 272 Okay, 272 minus 85, that's 187 over 272. Um, that will give you an answer of 11 over 16 or um, that will give you a very long decimal value. So, 11 over 16 is equal to 0 0.6875. So, 0. Um, 0 0.6875 or in percent that is 65.75 percent okay so example number four what percent more than 96 is 110 I uh, 108 so, your given will be the larger amount is, this is the shortcut for amount, that is um, 108. The smaller amount is um, 96 and your base is 96. So, given the formula, Rate is equal to larger amount minus your smaller amount over your base. So, 108 minus 96, that is 0 point, I, I mean, 108 minus 96 is equal to 12. Okay, hold on. So, this is equal to 12 over... 96 and 12 over 96 will give you an answer of 0 point 0 point 125 or 12.5%. So that will be the rate of your percent percentage increase example number five so two over seven greater than what amount is 54 so if we go if we're going to analyze so number five okay so our given 
would be your rate. Remember um, your clue uh, keywords in keywords in finding the rate is it, it's either in percent form or fraction form. So two over seven will be your rate. And then based on this, your the fifty four will be your percentage. Now, we're going to find the base of increase. Okay, why base of increase? That is greater, the word greater. Okay, so we're going to find base of increase. And to obtain the value of the base on a given amount, that is rate or fractional part greater than or less than the missing amount so we're going to divide the number by the sum if greater than or by the difference here if less than between one and the given rate or the fraction so your uh, formula for the base of increase that is percentage over one plus rate and then a uh, while for your base of decrease that is percentage minus one uh, percentage over one minus rate okay so our solution Okay, base of increase that is percentage, what is your percentage? 54 over 1 plus 2 over 7. Okay, if you remember, how do we add um, whole number to fraction? We're going to find the LCD. So, 7, 7 times 1, that is 7 plus 1. Ah, I mean, 7 divided by 1, okay, times 1, that will give us 7. 7 divided by 7, that's 1, um, times 2, that is 2. So, it will give us 54 over 9 over 7, okay. Since this is division, we're going to solve for the reciprocal. So, 54 times 7 over 9. So, this will give us an answer of 50, I, I mean, uh, 42. So, your conclusion would be The base of increase, why increase? Because of the word greater than is 42. Okay, so let's proceed to example number 6. So we have given what is your rate that is, um, the question is, okay, 180 is 76% less than what number? So if you see, we have your percentage that is 180 and the rate of 76% or 0 0.76. So uh, what are we going to find? That is base of decrease. Why base of decrease? Because of the word less than. Okay? So base of decrease. So this is question mark. So solution. So base um, percentage 180 over 1 minus... 0 0.76 okay so 180 this will give us an answer of 0 0.24 180 divided by 0 0.24 that is 750 so therefore your conclusion the base of decrease is 750. Let's have an example of applications of percentage. So question number one, RFS Metal Industries has 1,600 employees. 60% constitutes that production staff. So how many employees are there in production? Okay, so given 
are given would be your base is hold on let's put it here so given base is 1600 employees and your rate would be 60% or 60 0 0.60 so we're going to look for the percentage percentage um, of how many employees are there in production so what is our formula again for the percentage that is um, formula uh, percentage is equal to rate times your base so solution that is 0 0.60 times 1,600 employees. So that will give us an answer of 960. So your conclusion would be there are 960 employees in the production. Okay, example number two. So a multi-billion company reduces its workforce, workforce meaning um, the staffs, of 35,000 by 4.75. How many employees were laid up? So here, our given would be the base of 35,000. Remember the word of. Okay, and the rate would be 4.7% or 0 0.047. So, we're going to find for the percentage. Again, our formula for the percentage is P is equal to rate time survey so sorry instead of 4.75 this is 4.7 percent uh, i have a grammat uh, uh typing error okay so 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 your solution would be 0 0.047 times 35,000. so this will give you an answer of 1645 so, your conclusion would be there are 1,645 employees laid off. So, um, like we're hap what we're happening now because of pandemic. So, this is a common, common situation in every company. Let's have an example uh, Example of problems for the increase and decrease of percentage rate and base. So example number one, the National Housing Authority reported that housing prices in Antipolo Rizal have increased. So again, um, the word increase by 38.2% over the price of homes five years ago. So if... 850,000 was the average price of a house five years ago. What is the average price of house today? Okay, so let's define the given. So in number one, please bear with my voice because I have a code. Okay, so number one, our base would be 850. Thousand. Okay, and the rate. Okay, this the rate is very simple because of the percent sign. So thirty-eight point two percent, which is also equal to zero point three eight two. 
Okay, so we're going to find the percentage of the increase. Why increase? Because of the word um, increase and what is the average price of the house today. So um, we're looking for the um, percentage of from before to now. So percentage of increase. And the formula for this is base, if you remember, plus base times your rate. Okay, so solution. That will be 850,000. Plus 850,000 times 0 0.382. Okay. That will give you an answer of 324,700. And adding both. That will give us one an answer of one million one hundred seventy four thousand seven hundred pesos. So your conclusion: the average price of house today is. One million one hundred seventy four thousand seven hundred. So imagine if you invest earlier, right? Um, this is the power of inflation. Uh, eventually, we're going to discuss it sooner. Okay, so let's proceed by example number two. The value of a car typically um, decreased. Remember the word decrease by twenty three percent in the first year. A car is bought for eight hundred seventy thousand. What it what is its value one year later? So our given would be um, let's define the rate. This is very simple because of the percent that is twenty three percent or zero point um, zero zero point twenty three. Okay. And then our base is 870,000 pesos. And remember the word decrease. So we're going to find the percentage of decrease. And the formula for this is base minus base times your rate. So solution. Percentage of decrease is equal to 870,000 minus 870,000 times what's your rate? 0 0.23. Okay? Minus, so multiplying both, it will give us an answer of 200, 200,000. 1,100, okay? And the answer would be 669,700. 669,900. So, conclusion, the value of the car after a year is 669,900 pesos. We're going to discuss ratio. Ratio is a mathematical concept that is used to solve different types of problems. It is also a way of expressing the relationship of a number, quantity, substance, or degree between two similar components. It may be expressed in terms of fraction, quotient, or 
decimal. The numerator is called antecedent and the denominator is called consequent. Let's have example to um, understand the ratio. Express each of the following as ratio in simplest form. So number one, six inches to two feet. So if you notice, we have different measurements. So we have inches and we have feet. So we're going to convert the feet into inches. So we have one foot is equal to 12 inches. Okay. So, 6 inches is 2. Multiply this by 2, we have 24 inches. And putting this into a ratio form, that is 6 is to 24. So, if you notice, the number are side by side and separated by a colon. So, this is a colon. Okay? Where 6 is your antecedent. Remember, this is your numerator. And um, 24 is your consequence. So if we're going to put it in uh, fraction form, that is 6 over 24. Or in um, quotient form, that is 6 divided by um, 24. Okay, and to simplify this, we have a common denominator of 6. So that will give us an answer of 1 is to 4, meaning 1 inches is to 4 inches. Okay, question number 2, 10 weeks to a year. So in a 1 year, we have 52 weeks. Okay, so 10 weeks is to 52 um, putting this into simplest form, that will give us an answer of 5 is to 26. Um, and then number 3, 150 millimeters to 2 liters. So 1 liter is equal to 1,000 millimeters. Okay? So 150, uh, 150 ml um two um two thousand ml how do we obtain this that is two times one thousand so one fifty is to two thousand simplifying this it will give us an answer of three is to forty so that's how you will convert the terms into ratio but Please be reminded of the measurement. So if it is not the same, we're going to find or we're going to always find the common of it. Let's answer a word problem. So find the ratio of Arca's savings of 56,400 to Sophia's saving of 40,000. So expressing this into ratio, so we're going to find... Arkea's saving to Sophia's saving. We can also write this in this form. So, Arkea's savings over Sophia's saving. Okay? So this is a fraction form, this is a ratio form, and we, we can also um, do this like this. Arkea's saving over Sophia's saving. So putting this into number, we have, um, so... 56,400 is to 40,000. Simplifying the, both of this, it will give us an answer of 140 is to 100. So therefore, the ratio is 141 is to 100. For our last lesson, we'll be discussing 
proportion. So proportion is a way of expressing the comparative relationship between a part, share, or portion with regards to a measurement, amount, or number. It is expressed as the relationship between two ratios separated by this sign, okay, by, ah, sorry, so by this sign, or an equal sign, it has four terms of proportion that has a given um, special name. So, um, example, 1 is to 3 equals 4 is to 12. So, yeah. So, here we read this as this one. 1 is to 3 equals 4 is to 12. So, same as this one. So, we have the means. Means are the inner number or the second and the third terms of the proportion. Extremes are the outer numbers or the first and fourth terms of the proportion. So, this is it. So, this is your means. That is the second and the third um, par, uh, term. And your extremes is the first and the fourth terms. Okay? So, we have different kinds of proportion. So, first is the direct proportion. It is when an increase in one quantity results to an increase in another quantity. And a decrease in one quantity results to a decrease in another quantity. Quantity. The equation of the form y is equal to k times x, where k is constant, describe, describes y varies directly as x. So there's uh, algebraic expression on this already. So I know you're getting confused. Let's um, try some examples. Let's solve the missing term. So we have 1 is to 4 equals x is to 8. So we're missing the third term. And then we, if we remember this one, we have the means and the extremes. So let's try to solve this by um, multiplying. So let's try this one, okay? So 1 over 4 equals x over 8. So, we're going to multiply this one 4 times x. So, that will be 4x equals to 1 times your 8. So, 1 times your 8. So, yeah, here. Okay. So, that will be 4x. 4x is equal to 8. Okay. Removing or... um. Um, leaving the x only on your left. Okay, so x canceling 4. So 8 divided by 4, it will give you an answer of 2. Therefore, it will give you an answer of 1 over 1, 1 over 4, or 1 is to 4, equals 2 over 8, or 2 is to 8. Okay, let's try... How about this? Let's try this method, okay? So, 1 is to 4 is equal to x is to 8, okay? So, first, the extremes. This is your extremes. This is your first term and your fourth term times your... Uh, not times... And um, this is your means, that is the second term and the um, third term. So, uh, 4 times your x, that will be 4x, equals to 1 times your 8, that is 8. So, basically, this is just the same. Okay, canceling 4, lowest term, x is equal to 2. So, 1 is to 4 equals 2 is to 8. Let's solve this one. Nina Isabel bought 9 tickets to an international product explosion for 2,025 pesos. 
how many tickets could she purchase with 3,825? So, we can write it this way. So, let x, let x be the number of tickets can be purchased with 3,825. Okay, so 9, that will be 9 is to 2,200, um, sorry, 2,025 equals x is to 3,825. So, multiplying this um, by, uh, let's first compute the means. So, we have 2,025 times x equals your extremes. So, 9 times 3,825. So, 2,025, uh, 2025x equals 2, uh, multiplying both. So, it will give us 34,425. Okay. So, dividing both sides by 2,025, canceling this. Okay. That will give us an answer of. 34,425 divided by 2,025 is 17. So, therefore, your conclusion would be she can purchase 17 tickets with... 3,825 pesos. In inverse proportion, it is when an increase in one quantity results to a decrease in another quantity. Some examples are time and speed, volume and pressure, numbers of workers, and time of conflection, and others. The equation of the form is here. So, y is equal to k over x, where again, k is the constant. It describes as y varies inversely proportional as x. So, let's answer, the, um, let's answer example number one. A company that produces smartphones has determined that the number of smartphones it can sell is inversely proportional to the price of the smartphone. So, 4,500 can be sold when the price is 8,000. How many smartphones can be sold if the price of the smartphone is 7,500 pesos? So, here we have S where it stands for the um, sold items and P for the price. So, we were going to write the basic variation of equation and solve for K, okay? So, S would be equal to K over P. So, this means that um, um, your sales is inversely proportional to your price, okay? So, that would be 4,500K over 8,000 pesos. And to solve this, we're going to do the cross multiplication. So, remember, if the number is a whole number, your denominator is 1. Okay, so that will give us an answer of K. And multiplying this two, so four thousand five hundred times eight thousand. So the value of your k would be thirty six million. Okay. Then we solve for s. So s is p. S if p is equal to seven thousand five hundred. 
Okay, so S thirty six million over seven thousand five hundred. So the value would be four thousand eight hundred. So your conclusion would be if the price is if the price is seven thousand five hundred, then four hundred four thousand eight hundred smartphones can be solved sold can be sold okay partitive proportion involves identifying parts of a wool based on a given ratio of these parts or in other words when the wool is partitioned into two or more equal or unequal parts so let's have an example to understand this better Example, a certain company has overhead cost of 133434 last week. What portion of the overhead should sales, advertising, and operation departments receive if they share in the ratio of 4 is to 6 is to 11, respectively? So, um, since there must be 4 is to 6 is to 11 ratio, there must be a total of 21 units. So, adding 4 plus 6 plus 11. Okay. So, given, given, let 4x be the overhead amount of sales department sales department and let 6x be the overhead amount of advertising department Lastly, let 11x be the overhead amount of operations department. So, solution 4x plus 6x plus 11x equals to this one so one thousand uh, one hundred thirty three thousand four hundred thirty four so adding this all so we have twenty one x multiplying both sides by twenty one to remove twenty one on um on your left side leaving x only leave us an answer of six thousand 354 so this is the value of of your x substituting this substituting okay so for your 4x that will be 4 times 6354 it will give you an answer of 25,416 for the 6x 6 times 6,354 it will give you 38,124 38,124 then for 11x that will give you 69,894 so sales this is for the sales department this is for the advertising department and this is for the operations department so your conclusion would be 
the ratio of overhead amount is twenty five thousand four hundred sixteen pesos for the sales. 38,124 pesos for the advertising department and 69,894,000 pesos for the operation. Thank you, class, for being attentive. So, according to Alfred North Whitehead, it requires a very unusual mind to make an analysis of the obvious. So, see you again on our next class. Have a great day and bye!